Hi everyone, this is the Raspad 3. It's a tablet case for the Raspberry Pi 4 that I was recently sent for review. And basically it's a case that includes the uh, display, touchscreen, stereo speakers, and a battery pack. So on the left hand side we have uh, three USB 3 ports, Ethernet, HDMI, audio out, and power in. On the right side we have access for the micro SD card, the power button, and then buttons for adjusting the brightness and volume. The three green lights indicate the charge status of the battery, and the red light indicates that power is on. And overall I'd say it's a pretty good device. Uh, the battery life is pretty good. If you're just reading PDFs or doing something simple, I got about four, maybe four and a half hours of battery life. And if you're watching YouTube videos, I got about two and a half hours, maybe three hours of battery life. So let's go ahead and uh, install the Raspberry Pi, see how to configure everything. And I'll walk through some of my observations and highlight uh, some of the interesting features and some of the issues that I found along the way. The package arrived quickly and it was packed very well. Uh, nothing damaged or scratched. There is a one-page instruction sheet, and then on their website they have more details about the software options and how to configure everything. So the tablet has a, a little screen protector on by default. We'll peel that off later. Just a, a quick look at how it looks, and then we'll get to the rest. So here we have uh, the charger. It's a 15-volt, 2-amp charger. That's used for powering it and also recharging the battery. Uh, there's a small fan for cooling off the Raspberry Pi and then all the adapter cables, uh, USB-C, USB-A, Ethernet, and the two uh, micro HDMI. There is a micro SD card adapter and the accelerometer for sensing uh, orientation. They give you some heat sinks and a screwdriver. So assembly is uh, really simple. Basically, uh, there's five screws on the back one on each corner and then one in the middle. Comes right off and we can see there are two boards. The main board which does pretty much everything and then the little board on the side for the micro SD card and the buttons. The battery is securely mounted in the back. And so that main board on the right hand side is basically a USB hub and it controls the uh, LCD and the charger. So we start by uh, securing the Raspberry Pi with four screws. They provide them. Here I was uh, unpacking the, uh, the accelerometer board as well. And so yeah, I put in the micro SD card adapter and then that has a little flexible cable that plugs into the, uh, the board on the left. There's a little uh, black colored latch that you need to push down to secure that cable in place. And then they provide all the screws and they actually provide extras. So uh, don't worry, you're gonna have a few extras at the end or if you lose some, uh, you'll be fine. So you just need four of them. Screw them down just tight enough. Don't go, uh, don't go overboard. So now I'm plugging in all of the adapter cables that go between the Raspberry Pi and the Raspad electronics. So there's these two micro HDMI uh, cables. There's the USB-A cable. Ethernet cable. Finally, the USB-C cable for power. Make sure the cables are routed around that center screw uh, region. So yeah, be careful not to lose those five screws and then now we can install the cooling fan. So the instructions say to install the cooling fan with the uh, label uh, facing down. And then of course you orient it like that, although it's not that critical. 
And again, they provide extra screws, so you only need four of them. Alright, that little board is the accelerometer board for detecting orientation, and it looks like it probably solders on, but actually, um, if you look more carefully, you don't need to solder it on. It will um, slightly bend the pins when you install it, so it will uh, just stay in there as a friction fit. And I had it be very reliable, it didn't cut out on me, so uh, you don't need to solder it in place. I suppose you could if you want to, but you don't need to. The fan and then uh, carefully put the back cover back on. And this is when I noticed that I could probably um, put my USB adapters for my wireless keyboard and mouse. I could plug them in to the Raspberry Pi inside. That way I'm not having to use up the connectors on the outside of the Ras pad. And I also realized that because there's so much space, um, I could fit other things in here. So like here's an M.2 um, SSD. And I realized there, there's so much room that I could actually probably cram it in there if I really wanted to. This was obviously just a, a quick test. You want to secure it properly, but you get the idea. There is um, a lot of space in there, so that'd be great for projects where you want to have a little breadboard or other devices hidden inside. Anyway, so you put the back cover back on and secure it with the five screws. Then <clears throat> you can put in the micro SD card, and so it goes in upside down so the, the label will be facing the bottom of the RAS pad. Uh, I kind of wished it would have come with a USB-C charger, but they're using this uh, typical barrel jack power supply. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but it works. It's fine. And so the green flashing light indicates that it is charging the battery. Uh, to power it on, I realized that you have to hold that power button for about five seconds. And then after that, red light comes on yeah, there you go. The red light comes on to indicate that it is powered on. So here we have the Raspberry Pi booting up. And in this case, it seemed like there was a problem and I had to press Control D to continue the boot process. So this is why you definitely want to have a, a wired keyboard or you know a, a USB keyboard for um, setting things up. And so just a quick test of the touch screen. Seems to work just fine. Uh, pinch to zoom works fine. Multi-touch, all that is good. The viewing angles are pretty good. Um, not, not the best, but it's pretty good. And I noticed that when using the touch screen, it seemed like it was registering them uh, a little bit off. And so here I am with a, uh, a touch screen uh, test website. And it may not be terribly obvious in the video, but the touch events are a little bit low. They're maybe uh, a few millimeters below where they should be. Uh, but luckily, uh, after I rebooted, it seemed to fix the problem, and uh, I didn't have that problem anymore. It was uh, pretty accurate afterwards. And so again, here I was trying to figure out how the power button works. Um, so yeah, you need to hold it a few seconds for that red light to go off, and then a few seconds until the red light goes back on. The um, Raz pad does not turn off when the Raspberry Pi turns off, so you have to manually uh, cut power using the power button. So here I was testing to see if the orientation would work, and of course it does not. You have to install some software. So um, to do that, there's instructions. I'll have them in the link in the uh, video description, but here we are uh, downloading the software. It will ask you to restart and press Y for yes and let it restart. Now it'll work. So just wait a second for it to kick in and there we go. Now it orients correctly and it uh, worked very well for me. I was using it for a few days off camera and it was uh, never a problem. The other thing is of course you probably want a uh, touch keyboard so that you can actually use it more like a tablet. And so here I am installing that software. And again, this will all be covered in the uh, documentation that I have a link to in the video notes. 
So you have to uh, configure that first. And um, you go through and there's a few different options you can pick. It's all covered in the documentation. As we'll see soon, there was a weird issue where for some reason, after I made all these changes, it didn't save any of them. So we'll see now that if I try to open up the keyboard, yeah, it's, it's not docked at the bottom and I was trying to figure out how to move it. I couldn't even move the keyboard. So I tried rebooting and that didn't help. Yeah, so for some reason that didn't work. But now I see that, yeah, my settings did not get applied. So I, I go back and I reselect all of the changes that I wanted, and now it works fine. And it worked fine after that, even after several reboots. So I don't know what the issue was the first time, but now it works. So when you power it on, you go to the menus, you enable that uh, touch keyboard, and then it just works. The bottom row buttons is a little bit difficult because of the way the touch screen works, but other than that, it seemed to work okay. Uh, for some reason there, when I went to YouTube, uh, Chrome crashed. That was kind of weird. But anyway, opened up Chrome again, went to my website, and it seems to be working correctly. The touch screen's working fine. Orientation is working fine. Multi-touch is all good. I noticed the temperatures were getting kind of warm. I was kind of surprised about that. So I plugged in the charger just out of curiosity to see if that would have any effect. But yeah, the battery was uh, mostly full anyway. So I was curious to see why it was so warm. I noticed it was warm kind of all around, not just by the Raspberry Pi, but also by the, uh, the RasPad electronics. So here I am taking the back cover off. And I realized you have to remove the SD card like the sticker says. So I ended up having to shut down the Raspberry Pi. Right now, power off, I remove the micro SD card, remove the back cover. Put the micro SD card back in and turn on power. And so here everything's running with the back cover off and I was curious to see what the temperatures were. So I have a uh, thermal camera that I use and uh, I was also checking to see there's a slide switch that appears to control the fan speed, but in either position it's relatively slow, so um, unfortunately that didn't really help out too much. So yeah, here's my thermal camera and I'm using it to check temperatures and indeed the Raspberry Pi is fairly warm, but also that uh, RasPad circuit board to the right is uh, extremely warm too. And uh, this is a uh, winter time in Southern California, so the room temperature isn't that warm. It's maybe 22 degrees Celsius, maybe 21. So yeah, it confirmed my suspicion that yeah, the electronics are running kind of warm. And um, anyway, I just thought I'd take a look in and kind of show you guys what it looked like with a thermal camera. So I put the micro SD card back in and now I'm securing the back cover back on. And I noticed that the screw in that bottom or uh, in that top left uh, corner it got stuck. It actually uh, it got wedged in sideways. It's really not obvious in the video, but um, the holes they have in the case for the screws are wide enough so that they can actually get stuck um, sideways, which is unfortunate. So here I am taking it back off and then uh, poking something to get that screw to pop free. There we go. And then now I secure it again. And this time it worked fine without any problems. So this is the Raspad 3, and I've been playing with it for a few days. It's a pretty neat device, so I thought I'd kind of give you a summary of my uh, my thoughts on this. So it works very well. Um, if you're curious about how you can position it, it conveniently sits on its bottom like that. And of course you can also have it in its, um, I guess you could say, default position, which is laying down, kind of angled up a little bit. Unfortunately, you can't really stand it up um, in portrait mode because the 
the angle of the case is not enough to support it, it will, it will fall back. And then on this end, same way, but also there's these buttons that will get pressed if you try to rest it on that edge. Yeah, it's really be better for landscape mode. Um, of course, if you're, you know, if you're just like holding it by yourself, portrait mode is fine. And I was using that one watching some YouTube videos and everything and reading some PDFs. And it worked out pretty well. The uh, touch screen is pretty good. Um, I found it to be pretty responsive. The only issue I had with the touch screen was kind of along the bottom edge and the right edge. Uh, the precision is not very good. And so like if you're trying to, like if you've got like a full screen window, or I mean a full screen movie, and you try to press over here to exit full screen, it's like really difficult. You have to like get it just right. It doesn't really want to uh, position your touch event uh, right where it should be. The screen itself is overall okay. The viewing angles are not too bad. They say it's an IPS display and the colors are pretty good, but I do find that there's quite a bit of glare. So like, you know, on a modern uh, laptop or a modern smartphone, they'll often uh, bond the LCD panel to the glass. Like they'll use a, uh, I think it's called an op optically clear adhesive between the two. Uh, whereas this uses kind of the, um, the older way of just having the panel mounted behind the glass and there's a bit of an air gap, I think. And so maybe you can kind of see it. Yeah, you can probably kind of see it along the edge. And I mean, that's okay, but the issue is that, uh, well, there's two things. One, when you're using the touch screen, it looks like you're touching like a few millimeters above the screen. So it's kind of hard to get precise touches. And then also the reflections on this screen are um, much more significant when you're looking at it at an angle. Like right now you can kind of see it's kind of washed out. Also, I kind of wish the screen had a way to adjust the color balance. I find that it's a little bit on the yellow side, maybe like a warmer white balance. And all my other monitors are calibrated sRGB and they all look consistent, but this one is just a little bit on the yellow side. And I couldn't find any way to adjust that. There is no, you know, RGB sliders or, you know, gamma or color balance or anything like that. Um, you can adjust the brightness. Three buttons here, of course. Um, the power button, if you push and hold it for about five seconds, it will turn power on or turn power off. If you push it for a couple seconds, it will leave the Raspberry Pi on, but turn off the rest of the tablet. So it'll turn off the screen, the speakers, basically like the Raspad electronics, it will turn off. Um, and that could be useful, like if maybe you have it running as a server and you wanna leave the Raspberry Pi on, but you don't care about the display after you're done you know, messing with it for a little bit. To adjust the brightness, you just press this button one time, and then you can use up and down to, oops. So you have to press it, and then within a couple seconds, you have to start adjusting it. So it'll get fairly dim, but not too dim. So if you're gonna use this in a really dark environment, it might still be too bright. And then likewise, the brightness, it'll get reasonably bright, but it's not um, you know, super overpowering. So maybe not good, so good like outside, of course, but it'll be perfectly fine indoors. Um, I usually like to keep it at around 80%. And then for volume, there's uh, this button. You push it, and then again, within a few seconds, you can then adjust it to adjust your volume. And I find that uh, 50 is, is fine. It's a reasonable indoor volume for like YouTube videos, that kind of thing. One of the things I noticed is uh, the temperature does get pretty warm. So you can see here, uh, I'm not really even doing anything. And it's already at about 52 degrees Celsius. This is you know late November in Southern California, which is you know winter time. So the room temperature is probably about, you know, 20, 22 degrees Celsius. So that's really surprisingly warm. And that's why you saw earlier, I took off the back cover and used my thermal camera to take a peek. So I think the reason for the, the warm temperatures are a few things. So um, as you saw when I was assembling it early on, they did include uh, some heat sinks, which you can install on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll probably end up doing that later on. But I think the reason why they do that is because it does indeed get quite warm inside. The, the board that's in here, which basically drives the LCD and the speakers, and I guess it's basically like a, a USB hub. Um, it gets fairly warm, and especially when you are uh, charging the battery, which I should probably do. Especially when you are charging the battery, it will get noticeably warm. I'm watching YouTube videos, I was seeing the temperatures get up to about 75, which is quite surprising for uh, winter time. I think the main issue is that if you look on the bottom, there's really not much of an air gap. So if you have it like laying on the table, uh, there's no way for the air to get out. The fan is right here. It's a very small fan. 
and there's just no clearance when it's laying down. So if you have it on a table, or if you have it like on your couch or on your bed, um, there's really no air circulation at all. And the same is true for the speakers. So there are uh, two speakers which are inside around here and here, and the sound comes out through here. And if you're on a table, it's okay, but if you have it resting on your couch or your bed, it's a very muffled sound because there's no way for the audio to exit on the sides or the back. So I think ideally they could have maybe had some of the cooling vents on the sides and the back and a better fan because um, as, we, as you saw earlier, there's a little switch on the RASPAD circuit board. And so by default, it's on the lower speed, but even when you change it to the higher speed, it's not much faster and it's, it's barely able to move any air. Like as you can see, it's a very, very small fan and the grill in front of it blocks a lot of the air. Even with the case open, I couldn't really feel much of any airflow, just putting my hand over the fan on either side, on the inside or the outside. Overall though, I think it is a good device. Um, it's certainly a, a convenient way if you want to have your Raspberry Pi with a built-in display and a battery pack. It could be really useful for electronics projects where you want to have kind of a standalone device. And because the case is relatively big, there's quite a bit of room inside. So as you saw earlier, I could practically fit like a, an M.2 SSD in there. Now, of course, I just, you know, rested it on there to, to get a quick idea of if it would fit. But, you know, obviously you'd want to, uh, you know, position it carefully and make sure nothing's going to short out. But there is quite a bit of space in there. So you could put a small breadboard or, you know, a little USB device. You can tuck it in there and it would all be nice and compact and uh, protected. The, uh, the little accelerometer board that handles uh, auto rotation of the screen works pretty well. I've had it be um, consistently good. It, it's never caused problems. It's always been very good. The on-screen keyboard. So every time you start up the Raspberry Pi, you'll have to go to the menu, universal access, and then touch on board to uh, run the program. I already have it running, and you can kind of see the little uh, icon right there. And then uh, after that's running, you, you can, of course, um, you know, type on your keyboard. Again, the only issue is near the bottom edge of the screen and the right edge of the screen, the, the touch events are not very precise. So sometimes when I was pressing the space bar, it wouldn't quite register, which is um, a little bit annoying. So this could be a really nice device for electronics projects or um, on their website they show things like the RetroPie and OctoPie for controlling a uh, 3D printer. There's a lot of other projects they list. So you can kind of check out their website. I'll have links in the uh, video description. So uh, unfortunately I didn't have a lot of time to test out a lot of the functionality just because I wanted to get this video posted in time for the holidays. But it does seem to be a very good device. I'm overall very happy with it. If they could improve the screen a little bit, that'd be wonderful. And I would love to see if they could improve the, uh, the cooling situation a little bit. Because, again, right now, winter time, I'm not even doing much of anything. And it's uh, about 52 degrees, which is very warm. I'm kind of tempted to maybe uh, take a Dremel and uh, cut out a vent on the back or something. And maybe put a, um, a fan back there. Alright, so that's my review of the RazPad 3. If you're looking for a tablet type device for your Raspberry Pi, I would say it's a very interesting option to take a look at. I'll have links in the video description for where you can buy it and the documentation for it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you know anybody that might benefit from it, please share a link with them.